want you to be nice until it's time to not be nice. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Gruesome's Garage, the channel where we beat dead horses back to life. And you're probably wondering why I just made that reference. Well, I'm going to beat a little bit of a dead horse here. It has to do with how we are on the social media, on forums such as Facebook and um, other such platforms, Instagram, when we're dealing with one another. Uh, an incident happened a couple days ago that got me thinking, especially when it comes to people that are new to this hobby, how we that are more experienced and have been around it longer treat them. Face it, um, a lot of these cars are, when we, we're gone, are going to fall to the younger generation. And we're kind of stewards of these vehicles. I mean, they're not going to make, make them ever again. And with things getting tougher in the future, you're going to have switch to EVs and alternative fuels. It's going to take dedicated individuals to keep them going. So you've got to think of that kind of stuff when you're dealing with people. And I know there's some curmudgeons out there, flat out, I'm going to be blunt, there's some flat out assholes out there. Pardon my French. But I try to be, when I'm answering somebody's question on Facebook, on a message board, I try to be somewhat polite. Some, some of these questions are stupid, I'm not going to lie. I mean, you know, they're just, somebody will say, like, let's just say we'll buy a 68 MGB, get on Facebook, on an MGB owner's group, and say, what's the best place to get parts, or where do I get parts? Well, you got onto the internet to get on here, why did you do a Google search? You know, a more appropriate way to say that, and some of it's just the way people are, they're, they're, they're nervous, inexperienced, um, would be to say, hey, I just bought a 1968 MGB. Um, I've looked at a couple different parts places like Moss Motors and a couple other ones. What, what do you guys recommend for a parts vendor? Things like that's the way to do it. So as we're getting that, we're on that uh, subject right now, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, Tuesday, I was my last day of vacation. So I was sitting on my gazebo having my morning coffee strolling through uh, Facebook. And it happened to be the page for one of the branded cars that I, I own. And I saw this lady posted this question. And she happens to own one of the exact same models of the car that I own. But I'm not going to call her name out or the other guy's name out. We're going to refer to her as Jane Doe and the other guy's Bad Attitude Bob. So, this lady gets on there and posts a couple pictures of her car, and it's, it's a beautiful car. It's actually a rare model, and it was something that had been owned by her father, and she probably obviously inherited. So, this is what she put. I'm having a hard time getting a proper Haggerty value on my car. Anybody know? Question marks. No, it's not for sale. And that's the make of the car and some of the features of it. So, most of the people put on here, you know, comments. Um, problem if, if you've ever dealt with Haggerty, a lot of the cars, now Haggerty's not an auto appraisal service. They can refer you to people that in your area that do appraise cars, but a lot of their values are just what you do on a standard Google search if you're searching like NADA for classic car values or anything. They have a um, tool on their website to check value of your car, but you know what? I punched in my 36 Terraplane over there, it didn't come up with anything. And I will tell you personally, when I had that car insured with Haggerty years ago, they were a little bit lost. So I kind of got an idea of what the value was, because I mean, I've been around the cars all my life, and I did a stated value policy. So that's kind of like what a lot of the people on here. And here's my response, my initial response. I go, biggest thing is insured value, 
That's what Haggerty is looking at. In case, God forbid, something happens to it, but this being your dad's car, it's probably priceless. The blah 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 in original form is rare today as many survivors have been cut into street rods due to the popularity of that craze. And I'm not knocking street rods, I'm just stating a fact. Um, a rumble seat would add to the value. Based on your description, my opinion, thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars in current market conditions with the small imperfections you describe. Uh, fixed and detailed, add more to that. It's a beautiful car, and you know, that was what I stated. And she responded back in kind. Now, different people responded. Some guys got into a um, <laughs> a debate on the gold standard, um, how that gets onto a car page, but that's the stuff when you're dealing with social media. Um, but they weren't really talking to her. They were, you know. And like I said, these Haggerty's great, but you know, basic most collector cars are big three cars. They're Ford, Chevrolet, Dodger Plymouths, things like that. A lot of your independent cars, your Nashes, Hudsons, uh, Packards, you know, Willys, Kaiser, Frasers, uh, some of your oddball 30, um, like a Durant, say you have a Durant. It's going to be tough to pin down a value on that. So I'm going to get to the post here in a second. Now, bad attitude, Bob, and I'm not using his real name, though I'd like to. How in the world do you have a hard time getting a value from Haggerty? The only way that would be true is if you did not try. Pick up the phone and talk to someone there. They have access to all the sales and price guides worldwide. Just because you've never seen another one does not, not necessarily mean anything. I just access Haggerty's price guide online, and voila, your car has values. What a surprise. Funny. I have the same damn car and I accessed it, nothing came up. Must be he's just got a magical computer. But whatever. So she's polite. She goes, bad attitude Bob. They told me they didn't know the value. They asked me if I knew. But I was just looking for a smart ass reply like this one. Okay. So, bad attitude Bob responds to her. I have over 30 collector cars. Mm, ooh, good for you. And have dealt with Haggerty since they started. I bet she, she's probably got McKeel Haggerty on uh, speed dial. Mm -hmm. Never have they said they don't know the value of something. Your story is made up nonsense. Okay, now, he's all right calling her a liar. This lady's asking for help from a group of enthusiasts. You know, that's kind of ridiculous. And she responded in a polite way. You have a right to your opinion, but to all truth, um, she couldn't find anything on the car. She asked me to value it. My dad had an appraisal done on it years ago in the past. He was also a dealer, bought and sold many classic cars over the years, and it states the area they live in. I'm sure not going to argue with you. As you know, classic car prices have changed a lot. Now, I don't like a bully, and this guy was being a bully, so I had to put my two cents in. Probably should have just got my mouth shut, but it is what it is. Bad attitude, Bob. This is my response. For one thing, you don't have to be nasty. I've been around these, you know, cars that we're talking about, people, since I was a kid, and that's not what this club's about. Save the negativity for the Brand X people. I doubt she would make it up and waste her time. I have dealt with Haggerty for years, and I have a stated value policy on my car because when I switched them to years ago, they had difficulty pinning down the value then. And yes, I spoke with them on the phone. My friend Rich had a neighbor with a Moyer, and look up a Moyer sometime. But very rare. They were made in Syracuse, New York, by the way. And Haggerty had never even heard of it. So they don't always know. Now. I called him out, but I was I was kind of respectful. Here's his response. This this is rich. To me. This is bad attitude, Bob. Well, as a private client group member of Haggerty, ooh, for decades, decades, 
I know they do know, and if they don't, they find out within 12 hours. So facts and reality say otherwise. Ignorance and laziness is never an excuse. Likewise, if stating facts upsets you so much, I have to wonder how you got this far in life. Oh, I'm wounded. I got this far in life by not being an asshole to people. That's how I got this far in life. And pardon the French. I don't like swearing on the channel. I really don't. But this guy got him. He asked for it. So I said, I replied, bad attitude, Bob. Yeah, I definitely know nothing about Haggerty and how it works. And I put a copy of my Driver's Club magazine from Haggerty that I get from them. Hmm. So, and then this Jane Doe and I talked back and forth. And I gave her a couple other links for um, message boards that may be more helpful without the snarky comments. Okay, now that I've gone through all that, I'm going to get to the point of what this video is about. You got people asking questions, in this case a legitimate question, you don't have to be a jerk. If you don't like the question, scroll on. He obviously sounds like he's the one that's got an issue, and I wonder how he got this far in life. But he's got 30 cars and he's a Haggerty Premier member. But, you know, each is all. You know, if you want to be a jerk, be a jerk. But somebody is trying to find out something about their car, they're asking for help. And as hobbyists, especially the ones of us that know more, you know, what's wrong with giving a little advice, a little help to somebody? I, I'm not above asking people for help or advice. This Firebird, I'm not a Pontiac expert. My dad had a couple of them and my brother had some when I was a kid. I've worked on them here and there. But when I bought it, I had a lot of questions to the Pontiac people. And I'm going to tell you, that's a great group of people. They really are. You know, they will answer your questions and... I really have not got any snarky, other than wanting to build a 350 Pontiac, I got a couple snarky comments on that, but they were not really, they weren't being jerks. Just, you know, put a 400 or a 455 and it was their, um, their response. So, my point is, be nice to each other. You're going to ask a question, do it in a respectful manner, do some research first. This lady did do her research, but... As somebody answering that question, don't be a jerk. You know, they're, they're asking for help. They're, they're trying to get these cars back on the road. And that's not a bad thing. Or in her case, this is a family heirloom. She wants to make sure, if God forbid, tree falls on it, the garage burns down or something, gets hit. It's at least insured. You know? And like I told her, something like that's priceless. And she agreed with me. So, so be nice to each other. If you're answering a question, you know, if you know, legitimately know, answer the question. If you don't know, say, hey, I'm not sure, but, you know, maybe point them in the right direction. There are, you know, experts out there. Not, a, not all of us know everything. So, with that being said, I will probably get uh, the video. The next video is going to be taking the transmission out of the Firebird. And I'll get to that as soon as it cools off a little bit in here. It's pretty sweltering in this garage right now. But I had a great vacation. I look forward to seeing you all again on YouTube. And have a wonderful day. And God bless.